my New Year's Eve paint along pajama party. I am your host, Leilani Joy, and this is indeed New Year's Eve 2018. With me today is my muse and inspiration, Mr. Bob Ross. This was a Christmas present from my dad. Thanks, dad. Obviously, you know my taste, rainbows and Bob Ross, right? Anyways, um, I haven't done a paint along for a super long time, and I have a brand new piece that I am super excited to work on, and I just so happen to have an impending deadline, and I just so happen to be home alone um, tonight with my guinea pigs on New Year's Eve, which is a-okay by me, because if you guys are anything like me, you've been visiting with family and craziness the last few weeks, so I'm actually really excited to just have some quiet, peaceful time to create something. So you guys know the drill. Go grab something that you would like to work on, um, a piece for my class, get your sketchbook, uh, doodle on your hand, whatever it is you want to do. Knit. Somebody says they knit while they watch my paint along, which is really awesome, actually. Um, so whatever you'd like to do, take a little time for yourself while we just chat about art. And tonight I have some New Year's resolution themed questions to answer for you guys. I kind of briefly looked over them, but I haven't really like thought of answers, so it'll be kind of off the cuff. As you know, I, got, I like to do it that way. Um, anyway, I'll tell you more about this piece when we take a look at it and what I'm doing it for. And okay, I guess that'll get started. So get in your PJs. I got my gnome pants on. I'm ready to paint. So here we are. I hope you guys can see this okay. I'm trying a little bit of a different setup than I usually do because I'm working on a much bigger painting than I usually do. And I'm trying to be more responsible and not hunch over my desk like an old hunchback so that I can still paint for a few more years um, before I'm crippled. Um, anyway, so some of you guys have seen um, some process of this. I have shared a sketch on Instagram, um, which was very well received. Thank you very much. Everybody seemed really, really excited about it. Um, and you guys are gonna get a first sneak peek at my color comp here. So I've already um, pre-mixed most of my paint colors to match my comp and kind of, um, this is just kind of a rough like composite where I dropped in some color and stuff uh, just over the top of my sketch. So this is kind of what I'm working from, but I'm changing up um, you could probably see I'm changing sort of the florals and stuff. I had a few different references, so this is all kind of coming together um, a little bit orga organically. Um, but this piece is going to be my latest piece for 78 Tarot, which I'm doing again in 2019, and I'm very excited about it because this year I've been assigned the card Death, if you haven't figured that out already. And I'm really stoked about it because I have done, up until this point, all like um, very like light, more positive, empowering cards. And not, not that this card isn't, but I was very excited to do a, something a little bit more, um, a little bit more dark actually. Even though death, uh, the, the card of death and tarot is not a specifically uh, a negative card. It also symbolizes rebirth, um, the ending of something and the beginning of something else. So it has a lot of different symbolism and meaning behind it. And that just really kind of gets me excited. So um, this year we also are having a theme. So our theme this year is um, elements. So my element that I was assigned is water. So, you know, I really love the concept of Ophelia. As you guys know, there's definitely a little bit of my Ophelia piece in this one. Um, but I wanted to kind of like take it to like another level. Like she's like sort of decomposing under the water here. And she's, um, there's a rebirth and a sprouting of new life um, in the flowers here. Uh, and there are certain flowers that are, traditionally in, um, I think it's a, are these daffodils? Daisies. They're daisies, I think. Um, there's daisies usually represented in um, the traditional death tarot cards, so I wanted to have those daisies kind of sprouting up. Anyways, this is really kind of an interesting experimental piece for me. It's a little bit more like surrealist than I've been doing, and I really like it. I, I love the weirdness of it. I want to do more pieces like this. Um, so you're probably wondering right off the bat um, why I have her face is still a sketch here. And that's because I do have it. I do. I have started to transfer underneath, but I lost a little bit of the personality that I started with. So sometimes when I want to try to add that back in a little bit, I will cut up my um, this. Is, so I did a big transfer um, 
that looks like this. So this is what I used to transfer it to the board. And then I just printed out another copy of this and um, cut out her head. It's kind of a little cheat, just sharing it with you. Um, and taped that back, carefully lined it up, which was a little bit tricky. Luckily her hair is like a straight line, so I was able to kind of figure out where it goes. And then I can kind of um, put some of her uh, features and head shape back in there because it got a little bit lost in the transfer. Okay, anyways, so let's go ahead and start painting, shall we? So at this stage, I'm starting to um, do some more modeling on the skeleton here. And I've got some colors mixed up already. I've got my little cup of colors there. Um, and the thing to think about, I have a little too much water in there, it's separating. Um, the thing that to keep in mind with this is that I'm, since I'm painting the skeleton and stuff beneath the water line, I'm adding a little bit of my water color to everything. So there's nothing that's a pure color, um, if that makes sense. So my white um, will have a little bit of blue in it so that it gives the impression that it's submerged. Because if you use, I am using a little bit, I am cheating a little bit on up, up here on the floral areas um, just because I want those to pop a little bit. Um, but for the most part, I do want to give a little bit of an illusion that this is below and the the sh the neck is above if that makes sense so mixing a little bit of the um the background color in will give you that that kind of cheat effect um and i did that same trick when i was painting ophelia as well and that really kind of made it look cool like her skin tone had a lot of blue in it and that's just kind of something you can do to create um, um, an illusion of transparency, if you will. Of course, like typically, you know, since I don't paint realism, I paint surrealism, I can cheat the rules a little bit. Um, I, I'll have you guys weigh in on this if you want, because um, my husband and I actually disagreed on something with this particular piece. and. He's usually right, and he's a very, very talented artist, so I usually do take his um, opinion as possibly better judged than mine. Um, but he, in my comp, because um, speaking of that, um, the only thing that I'm not changing the tint of is her hair. So you can see that above water, it's a dark navy, and below water, it's also a dark navy. And he was of the mind that either the top or the bottom needed to be a different color. So I needed to uh, wash out the hair that was underneath to make that look like it was underwater or make her hair above a, a little bit of a different color. And the reason that I, I kind of put my foot down on this, and this is just sort of my own artist integrity, is that I like this illusion that her hair is cut um, because Again, I think hair cutting, like I said with my Mulan piece, is very symbolic of um, evolution, of change, especially for women. Like if we chop our hair off, that's, there's some reason we're chopping it off and we want to start anew. Um, so I wanted that to look connected, if, if that makes sense. So like if I cover this, uh, the chop line, it very much looks like it's very long hair and it looks, it, it has the illusion of that's all one um, connected shape. Does that make sense? So I, I don't know. Uh, what do you guys think? I mean, I just, for the sake of my design and what I was going for, I just felt that uh, I needed to stick to that. And he was like, no, no, I think you need to do something else. And he's very analytical, I think, sometimes because, um, not that that's a bad thing as an artist, because he is super, super good at what he does. Um, but he does a very, uh, I guess, for the most part, realistic portrayals because uh, he works in film and, and they have to actually make a costume that will fit a person. So he can't get too far away as far as stylization and stuff. But I, you know, I'm truly a fine artist for the most part. So I want, to me, more a, a concept and more of an emotion 
and storyline behind something is a little bit more important to me than it being correct as far as the rules of, you know, the world. So I don't know, something to think about. And I, I love the fact, like I've said before, that there's no actual right and wrong in these things, you know, we can, uh, that's the whole point of us making art. If we wanted everything to be right and correct, we would just take photos, which, you know, there's art and photos too, of course. But um, when you're creating something purely from your imagination, I think it's nice that it, it, it is, does have an element of wrongness of fantasy that comes just from your own take on the world and your own experiences. So I don't know, just kind of an interesting way of looking at it, right? Okay, well, um, while I continue to add some layers into um, the leg bone connected to the hip bone, I'm going to take a look at these, um, uh, these New Year's questions. I don't really know what they are. I think it was some kind of like, um, it was a youtube tag prompt or something I, I don't really do those but i was like this could be kind of interesting because i haven't done a paint along in a while so i don't think i've like pulled you guys for questions so i thought that this would be on theme all right so our first new year's themed question tonight is number one if you could look back on one memory from the last year that you wish you could relive what would it be Oh gosh, that's a fun one. Um, I actually was very fortunate to have a lot of good experiences this year. 2018 was a weird year because I had like some of the worst experiences ever and so, yeah, some of the worst experiences in my life and some of the best. So it's it's a bit of a toss up um, on like, was it a good year or a bad year? Cause it kind of was both, honestly. Um, Oh gosh, I think what immediately jumps to mind, uh, I had some really amazing trips that I got to go on this year. And um, uh, at the very beginning of the year, I got to go to New Zealand and that that was a really incredible trip. I got sick. I always get sick when I travel, so that was kind of a bummer. But uh, we, we really did have a good time. And one of my favorite experiences of the trip was when we went to Hobbiton. And I wouldn't mind reliving that. It was, they actually, they, they rushed us through so fast. Unfortunately, there's so many people that they have to get through. But it was such a great day. We had this incredible bus driver who like was super knowledgeable about New Zealand history. And we got like a really great history lesson as we drove on the bus to Hobbiton. And we just saw the most beautiful countryside. And I don't know, it was a, it was a good day. So, I mean, that's hard for me to say because I, yeah, I, I went on some other great trips this year, but I think I'll say for the sake of uh, not lagging on these questions too long is I would relive my Hobbiton experience because that was awesome and eat the Hobbiton food again because that was, that was amazing. All right. Uh, number two, what was one of your New Year's resolutions that you accomplished? Um, I don't, I don't really do those. <laughs> Uh, but let me think of a goal. Okay, I will say this wasn't really a um, this wasn't a resolution per se, but it's a, f a fear that I overcame this year, which I'm quite proud of actually. And that was painting live in front of people. Uh, many of you guys know I went to um, I was the featured artist for the whole month of May at Disneyland and at Wonderground Gallery, and they really, really wanted me to paint live. And I was, I was super scared. And I know that sounds weird because they said to me, they're like, well, you paint on video all the time. You, you live stream, you do your YouTube, like, you know, this should be a cinch for you. But it was so different. I mean, I was afraid it was going to be so different because I'm like, well, there's still like a little bit of disconnect between me and the public when I do that and I don't feel like there's someone literally standing over my shoulder and I was having nightmares. I was having terrible anxiety. I didn't sleep much for several days, if not more before, because my mom talked me into committing to it. My, my mom is an amazing 
cheerleader for me and she always kind of she's pushed me to do things outside my comfort zone which I really appreciate and she's made me she's a very outgoing and assertive and successful person and she's made me more so she's like you gotta get out there if you want that you're gonna have to work for it so she said just sign up you can do this and I did it and I absolutely loved it I had so much fun I would do it again in a heartbeat um Amazingly, I thought it would be the most terrifying thing that I've ever had to do and everyone was so nice and supportive and I felt very at home there and everybody asked great questions and honestly, I did more chatting with people than I did uh, actual um, <laughs> painting as some of you guys know who came out to see me there, but it was a wonderful experience and it really was a, a fear that I overcame and um, something else great that happened to me this year wouldn't have happened because of that. Um, if I hadn't done that, I got to meet one of my favorite, uh, RuPaul's Drag Race drag queens of all time, Miss Raven. And she is a big fan of Wonderground Gallery and, um, of my art apparently. And she has bought several of my prints and she just happened to come in with her gorgeous boyfriend, uh, while I was there. Um, shout out to you guys if you're watching this. Um, while I was there painting and I got to meet them and chat with them and it was super surreal. So, uh, it, it definitely paid off that I got to, to do that. Okay. Ah, uh, number three, three, um, three words to describe last year. Oh my gosh. Three words to describe last year. Um, God, that's kind of a hard one because I, I, like I said, I had a lot of fun, um, this year, but I also had some very sad things, um, personally in my life. Um, I lost a family member a few weeks ago and that's been really, really, really hard on all of us. As many of you guys know, um, how hard that can be, especially when it's a sudden tragic thing, um, as it was in this case. So, um, I also, I also, as, as some of you guys know, was, I happened to be at the beginning of the year, I was in Hawaii, uh, when they had the, um, missile alert, um, thing that happened. Um, all of us who were in Hawaii during that time, uh, received an alert to our phones that said that there was a, a missile that was incoming to Hawaii and we should seek immediately immediate shelter. This is not a drill. So for about 45 minutes um, during this time, myself, my husband, and everyone in the state of Hawaii thought that we were going to die. Um, and it was one of the most traumatic, frightening things that I've ever been to. Sorry, this is kind of going into a dark place. Um, so that was that was not not a good moment. Although I strangely like had some kind of um, I, I, I was in a very positive mode after I got home from that though. I, I was kind of like, whoa, you know, it kind of makes you like think about things differently. Um, so yeah, so three words, three, three words would be courage. I think I'm going to use courage because I had a couple of things that were very scary this year that I, I got through and, um, I'm proud of. And, um, Uncertainty. I'm going to use uncertainty because there was some things this year that like, I just kind of felt like, I don't know which way to, which direction that I want to go next. You know, I've been feeling a bit like that with my career this last year. Um, this is the first year where I've, I felt that I've sort of plateaued in a lot of ways. Um, maybe not, not so much with my artwork. Cause I feel like my artwork has, has still continued to, uh, develop and I've been proud of like, uh, like my style kind of evolving and stuff, but more like, do I want to do more painting? Do I want to do more teaching? Do I want to kind of go a book route? Do I want to make other products? Do I want to start doing more digital art and concept art? Kind of like what my husband does. Do I want to adapt to that? Like what, what is my next step? So I felt a lot of that and I'm hoping that some of that will get sorted in 2019 because I'm feeling confident that I want to make, make maybe a slight shift, um, 
I mean, I feel like sometimes I can't possibly add more to my plate, but I don't know. Something, something's coming. Um, and the last word I would use is love. I have felt a lot of, lot of love this year um, from friends, from family, from um, my wonderful husband. I feel very, very fortunate to have him. And he's been, um, actually, he's been at home for uh, the last, oh my gosh, I think, he, well, almost a year now. So he he's quit, lost his studio job at Telltale Games. He was at Telltale Games. Um, some of you guys know about that. Um, and now he's been working freelance and being my studio mate for the last year. And we were both kind of apprehensive about how we were going to make that work and if we were going to be too close to each other. Oopsie. I got it. I hate that. I touch my, just, just lick it off. It's fine. Um, I was a little apprehensive if we were going to be able to share a studio space and get along and everything. And we kind of, I mean, as crazy as it sounds, have been incredible um, co-workers. <laughs> Every morning we get our coffee and we do a little morning stand-up with a whiteboard. And it's like, okay, what are your goals for today? And what are your goals for today? We break for lunch. Sometimes he goes and meets friends for lunch and gives me, you know, a little quiet time. Um, and it's been really great. And I felt uh, closer to him than I have ever possibly because we've really learned how to pick our battles and fight better uh, because we both had so much work to do. There was literally not time in either of our schedules to pick meaningless fights. So it's, it's all been really, really good on that front. All right, now I'm gonna move up to the face here a little bit. And like I said, um, I had kind of painted in this area and her hairline started to like close in a little bit and I was like ah, I'm losing that personality so that's why I did a retransfer to kind of like flush that back in because I really like sort of in in the comp I like kind of like how she has like this wide I like a wide face I don't know <laughs> let's just do a wide set eyes wide face alien a little bit alien um, and that really like pointy, like, you know, vampire bang. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to just work back, work that back in a little bit. You know, that's the kind of thing about, um, acrylic painting or probably any painting, any type, well, maybe not watercolor. Um, but like, oil or acrylic painting is really it's a whole process of like well, <laughs> just made a weird noise it's a whole process of like a push and pull right you add a little you subtract a little you you can kind of keep layering you can keep cutting in and that's why I love acrylic because it dries so quick so that you can really like just go right over the top of it if you're like okay that's not really working for me just go right over the top of it um, if you're painting with oil, it's more of like you can wipe it out like it's still wet. So you can like literally lift it off or you can blend it. So it's a little bit of a different process. Some people like that better. Um, I, I get a little bit nervous with that because I'm like, what if I accidentally like wipe off what I don't want? Um, so I kind of prefer this like layering carving method. That's what I'm going to call it. That's what we're patenting today. The Leilani Joy layering and carving method. Begin. <laughs> um, that's what my, uh, for those of you who used to take ballet, sidebar, uh, my ballet instructor, I did ballet for, oh gosh, a lot of years. I am not really even sure how many. Um, but my ballet instructor had like, I don't even know, they might have been vinyls. Like it might have been, it was like pretty old school. Uh, maybe it was CDs. And every time that they would come on, there was like a voice and it would be like, plies, standard two, ready, and. And it would like announce what the exercise was. I don't know why, but it's like burned in my brain. Uh, anyways. Okay. So what are we on? Number four. What have we got for four? Four. Best music related creation inspiration last year by an artist in your opinion. Okay, I'm terrible at these type of things because I don't listen to any modern music. <laughs> I'm officially a 30-something that only listens to throwback hip-hop and R&B. Um, oh, God. Uh, I would probably just say RuPaul's Christmas album because that's what I've listened to the most. Hey, sis, it's Christmas. You can check me off your wish list. 
Um, I listen to a lot of RuPaul every year um, because she just makes me feel good. <laughs> Everything about that show. If I'm ever having a bad day, I just watch RuPaul's Drag Race and I feel so happy. Um, so that was what I'm trying to think. I know I must have heard like at least one new album this year. Oh, God. Oh, that's, that's like a trick question. I'm not sure. I discovered some new music that I like. Um, I, I discovered um, an artist named Sophie Tucker this year, and I've been like listening to her nonstop. So I loved her. I don't know if I've... Maybe it was a new album. I don't know, though. It's probably like a couple years old. Uh, I think there was a new Gorillaz album this year that I liked okay. I listened to that quite a bit um, when I found out about it. So that that was, I'm pretty sure that was a 2018 release. Um, yeah, so I'll go with that. I don't know. I, I'm sucky about like what knowing what's hip and in. <laughs> um, okay. It's number, question number five, something you're looking forward to this coming year. Um, oh boy. Well, I am looking forward to, I'm going to see Kinky Boots um, in February. So I'm very much looking forward to that because I've, I'm a big musical person and that's one that I've always wanted to see. I feel like this is maybe like a little too much ear. Mm. Ears are weird to me because actually when you look straight ahead, you don't really see, let <laughs> me see my, myself as reference, much ear. So I might kind of pull those back I'm not sure maybe I'll leave that leave that off until I decide anyways yeah so my mom hooked us up with some tickets to kinky boots and I'm very much looking forward to that um I'm going with my parents to Hawaii again my parents love Hawaii I think I'm ready to face my fear again so I think we're gonna go to Hawaii uh in the spring sometime so I'm very much looking forward to that I'm looking forward to singing, seeing what art opportunities come this year. Um, I'm looking forward to doing a new Disney piece. I'm not sure which one they're going to assign me this year, but I will be back for another month long residency in September 2019. So I'm super looking forward to that. I asked them to put me near Halloween this year because I love Halloween time at Disney and I love all the pumpkins and decorations and everything. So I can't, I can't wait for that for sure. Okay. Number six, what did last year teach you? Um, I kind of talked about this already, I think, cause I was talking about, you know, sharing a studio space 24 seven with my significant other. Uh, but it's taught me, uh, patience, um, not to sweat the small stuff. Like I said, it's weird how like kind of weird things can happen to you that are negative, but you end up think like having such a greater appreciation and gratitude for the good days. You know, you're like, man, I was really fortunate. I had a nice day today. The sun was out. I took a walk. You know, my pets made me laugh. I saw a friend for lunch, you know, just like little things like that. And um, yeah, I, I really grew to have more appreciation. Sometimes I, I've notoriously as a young person, as a younger person, got very caught up in things. And I lived a lot of years of my life being anxious about like everything, honestly, like I always had like a knot in my stomach, like all of my school years, I was very anxious. And I have learned as I'm now becoming a, a mid thirties something, like it's not a big deal. It's okay. It's just one day. It's just one event. It's just one, it's just a feeling that you're having right now. It's going to go away and nobody's even going to remember what you wore, said, did, or didn't do. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm living a little bit more of a Zen life and I'm, I'm not being as, I'm really trying to curb expectations. I think that's been a big thing for me. I have expectations of myself and of other people sometimes. And I'm like, oh, this is not what I was expecting to happen. And I would get a lot of frustration at myself and be very hard at myself sometimes. So I'm lear learning a little more patience there too. So that was some positive things that definitely came out this year. Um, seven, what was your most worn clothing item last year? Probably filthy sweatpants. <laughs> oh, I know I have these. So these I'm wearing these 
pants that my sister got me for Christmas. We have matching ones and they're like fleece pants with gnomes on them. But I have another pair. There's probably evidence of them somewhere that have their blue fleece and they have these giant stars on them. And I'm sure that my husband can also attest to that, that being my most worn piece of clothing. Like it's often kind of chilly in, in the Bay area where I live and I just love being cozy and working in my cozy pants. So I'm definitely going to say star pants for the win. Oh, okay. Number eight. If you had to sum up your year in one word, what would it be? I already did that. That's the same question. Uh, I kind of, I, I think I already did that in one word. Uh, see that? I don't know. It's been kind of like tumultuous feels like too harsh of a word because I wouldn't say it was like tumultuous like I had some stressful things but I had a lot of really nice um happy times so uh I don't know I already did the three words so I'm gonna I'm gonna skip this one number number nine what are you hoping for more of this coming year didn't I answer that one already too who wrote these they're like come on these are too repetitive what I'm hoping for more in this next coming year is more RuPaul's Drag Race. May RuPaul never die. And if, oh, God forbid, some she does, then then Latrice Royale will replace her and Drag Race will go on forever. That That is what I want in the coming year. For, and forever more. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Um, okay. Uh, number 10. What are you hoping for less of in the coming year? Um, I... Um, like I said, I kind of, I want less, well, I can't get political, but because, you know, I don't really do that on this show, but I want less of that, less things for me to have trouble sleeping at night. That, that kind of thing would be good. Um, but I may not get it. <laughs> Who knows though? Who knows? We'll see. Uh, number 11, what book what what's the best book you read last year this year um well i have not read that many books <laughs> i'm not like i'm so i'm one of those people that like i reread books like right now i'm rereading lolita again cuz i like i like audiobooks and i have this like super intense crush on um on Jeremy Irons and he reads that book and I mean the subject matter is kind of creepy I guess <laughs> this is getting weird but anyways I like the sound of his voice so I've been listening to it again and it's just it's such a god it's an interesting book if you haven't read it it's disturbing but like it, it's such a like edgy topic told in such a poetic kind of way I don't know I can't really describe it without you having read it because if if you haven't read it, it just sounds like a pervert book, which like it kind of is a pervert book, but there's a lot of like layers to it. I don't know. Anyways, I need to read a new book. I actually have a few um, downloaded in my Audible queue that I'm looking forward to. I, I got Snowpiercer recently or not, not Snowpiercer, um, Snow Crash, um, which has been recommended to me because um, I love the fifth element. I don't know much about it, so I'm, I'm probably going to start that. I'm going to start that book in 2019. I'm also, I've shared with you, with you guys, um, this before, but I am like the only person on the earth that has not read or seen a Harry Potter. Well, I technically saw the first Harry Potter movie, but I was like making out with a guy in high school. So I didn't really say it. Okay. Um, but I am considering starting the audiobooks while I paint. Um, I heard the audiobooks are actually really good. So I might finally get myself into Harry Potter if it's not too late. <laughs> it's probably never too late, right? I just, I don't know why I like somehow like missed the boat on it. Um, I, a friend of mine in high school got me like the first three books and I started it and I, I kind of liked it. Um, it wasn't that I didn't like it. I just sort of got like sidetracked and then I, I don't know. I didn't go back to it. Uh, but yeah, so maybe that's what I'll do. Okay, so uh, here is the last question on the um, the New Year's prompt, and then I'll see if I have a couple more from um, you guys who I maybe haven't gotten to. 
what is your New Year's resolution for the upcoming year? I really do want to get back into um, dance of some kind. I say that every year, but like this year, I really want to um, try and make that happen. Um, I, I, I did um, some pole dancing. Now, don't get the wrong idea. It's very fitness forward. Uh, a couple years ago, and I really loved that. It was great upper body strength um, and uh, choreography and just, it, plus it's just really super fun. So I really want to like maybe get back into dance of some kind and or I've been going um, rock climbing with my husband and I would like to do that more and get better and stronger and you know, this, there's no better time than now to do it because I can tell you, <laughs> I now at the age I am, which I know it doesn't show except for the gray hair, but now I like find myself like randomly injured without explanation. <laughs> so that's what I guess is part of like your mid thirties coming up to get you. Cause like the other day I was like, uh, I, I don't recall falling down and I do fall down often but I don't recall like doing anything out of the ordinary and my foot was just like swollen and I had a big bruise on it and I couldn't walk on it I'm like okay everyone's like well how'd you do that I'm like I have no idea just being me I guess <laughs> I have no I have no idea where it came from um and yeah I noticed that I recover a whole lot more slowly than I used to in my teens and 20s I was just like thrash myself around so <laughs> this is a slightly funny story but recently okay recently this is yesterday I decided um that I wanted the the mattress that we have in our guest room I wanted that in our bedroom and I wanted the mattress in our bedroom in the guest room because we got one of those ghost beds for um when our guests come over and honestly it is so good we paid more for the one we have in our bedroom but I like it so much and I sleep so much better. Like it feels so good on my back that I wanted that one instead. And I'd asked my husband to help me with it. And, you know, it kept going by the wayside. And so he's away visiting family. And I'm like, I'm going to move that mattress. Like I used to do this stuff all the time when I was like a teenager. I'd like rearrange all my bedroom furniture in the middle of the night. Like I'd do weird stuff like that. So I'm like, I can do this. Um, so I did not realize like how much those like pure foam, uh, like queen size mattresses weigh. Well, they weigh a freaking ton. <laughs> and I will tell you, I did it. I don't know exactly how I did it. I somehow stood it up and like, I put like plastic bags under it so that it would like slide on the carpet and... Oh my God, I don't know what I was doing. It was like two o'clock in the morning. I was sure that I hurt my back because I was like trying to hoist the thing. And then of course I had to get the other one off. And there's like, we have like a tight hallway. I don't know. I should have videotaped it. I should have videotaped it. I should have recorded it and um, sped it up because it was probably like the most hysterical thing. I was like tripping on it and like trying to climb over it and it kept flopping over my face. <laughs> Anyways, you know, you get the picture. Okay, I'm going to switch it up and stand up and paint for a little bit so I can kind of get up in this business. And I'm going to start blocking in a few of her facial features here. Sometimes I kind of like to leave this to last because I like it so much. Like, I notice most artists do the opposite, which I find kind of interesting, um, that they will paint and completely render the face out, like, to completion before they do anything else but since that's my favorite thing to paint I don't really like to knock it out like I like to save the reward to the end if that makes sense because then I'm like oh then I have to drudge through like the kind of boring parts of the painting and then it's like I don't know so like I know it's done when I get to put those final eyelashes in and and really get to the facial details um, sometimes though, I do think that that, that, uh, technique I have is flawed because if you have the face done and you're like really happy with it, then the, the rest of it doesn't like have to be as on point, especially if you have like a gallery show or a deadline coming up, you can kind of fake like florals and, 
um, like other things, like it doesn't have to be as strong. The, the focal point is always going to go right to the face. So if you leave that to the last minute and you're struggling to get it right at the end, I think sometimes that can kind of be a negative thing. You're like, oh, if I, if I had that done, the rest of it's sort of like, there's a hierarchy, I think, to, um, unless you're like a super, um, like, uh, Trump Loy type painter where everything has to be the same finish and it needs, all needs to be hyper real. But in my case, I, I can sometimes get away with leaving a couple areas a little bit more ambiguous or a little bit more graphic, um, specifically because I do like to have some kind of just flat graphic areas and I can kind of like fake that and leave most of the details um, in the face. So I don't know. How do you guys like to do that? I'd be kind of curious to know. All right. Well, um, I know we're probably reaching our maximum time limit already. It went by so fast, but I am going to try to, um, get to a couple people that have been waiting like months or I don't even know, maybe longer to have their question answered because I haven't done a paint along in a long time. I've done a couple of Twitch streams and I like, I like Twitch and I will continue to try and do that once in a while. Um, but sometimes I, it's a, it is a more challenging format cause I am live and sometimes I have like technical issues like, you know, the sound cuts out or the camera is lagging and then I'm trying to like troubleshoot while people are waiting. So I sometimes do kind of miss my tried and true paint along format where I can have your questions handy. If something weird goes on, I, I have an opportunity to kind of edit that out and yeah so I don't know what, what do you guys think do you really do you still prefer the live because on the other thing is not everybody is always available for the live stream because of um you know time differences and stuff like that sometimes I know some of you just can't really line up with when I'm streaming so I think it's still a nice way to kind of chat and and um you know, paint along <laughs> with you guys with this, this old format. So I don't know. We'll see in 2019. We'll try and experiment with a few things, but yeah, I just kind of miss doing it this way. So here we are anyway. So this person had a question on my, um, ladybird part two paint along. So that was like a while ago, but I don't think I ever answered it. So I'm going to answer it now and hopefully, um, they will still see it. So this question comes from Marcus GV and he wants to know, I'm really curious to know if you've been inspired by this artist at some point. Her name is Mira Fujita. Uh, if you don't know her, take a look. I think you'll like it. Love your art and have an awesome day. I, I am not familiar with Mira Fujita. Uh, so let's look it up. Hey Google. Look up Mira Fujita. Check out these pictures. Oh my God. I love my new Google Pixel phone. You squeeze the little sides and talk to it. Oh, wow. Oh, take a look at these guys. These are gorgeous. I have not seen these, but I really, I really do like them. You're right. The faces. Wow, they're weird. That's weird. Something in the faces definitely looks like mine a bit um though, though I was talking about the wide set eyes earlier I was a pro for Halloween when I was a kid so this one really speaks to me they're really gorgeous they're very very delicate I love they're probably not coming across as good um through here but really soft and beautiful they look they look like watercolors or inks I think um yeah thank you so much for that Marcus I love those you were right I will definitely look at more of her work I'm, I'm glad and flattered that um uh you think that we look look alike in our styles okay and my next question I think it is the only other question I have is from AJ Heavily who asks I loved Oxenfree it was such a cool game have you gotten all of the endings yet uh, no, I didn't because I actually only did one playthrough and then I watched my husband's playthrough, which was, I think, very similar. I think we got almost the same ending. Um, so I don't know. It's been like a few months now, so I think I could replay it 
and get back into it. I really liked it. It's a really, really unique game. Um, you guys should check that one out if you like interesting, quirky story indie games. <laughs> um, I recommend it. Uh, speaking of games, so before I take off here, I want to um, mention, so a lot of you have brought up this game with me, and I've gotten a lot of messages about it, actually. Uh, this game that came out called Gris, and I think that's how it's pronounced. It's just G-R-I-S. And I've received a lot of messages saying, this reminds me of you, this reminds me of you. And oh my God, I cannot wait to try it. It is, it is sitting on my, my PC waiting for me to play it as we speak. And I won't say too much. You can look up the trailer yourself if you're into that sort of thing. But if you can imagine like a hybrid of um, watercolor, like fashion illustration, kind of like my style with like the inky stuff and Ivan Earl and made that into a video game. That is Gris. And it is so beautiful that I almost cried at the trailer because I was like, oh, like I really wish that I had somehow been involved in making this beautiful thing. Um, I have no idea what the like the story is. It, it, it seems to be, it's a side scroller of some kind, um, but it's just incredibly, incredibly beautiful. So I'll let you look that up yourself. But um, Thank you, thank you to anyone who um, said that it reminded them of my work because I just take that as a massive compliment because it looks absolutely beautiful. Either that or I have a lawsuit against these people and I should sue them for stealing my style. All right, guys. Well, I have quite a bit. Oh, I have a lot to, left to do on this lady, but um, we made a little bit of progress tonight. So thank you for sticking with me and watching this piece develop. I can't wait to share more and to show you the final piece that will come out for 78 Tarot in 2019. And if you don't know already, my last piece, The High Priestess, is now available on iTunes. No, just kidding. My last piece is available from 78 Tarot in their latest deck, Tarot Mystic. And these cards are absolutely freaking gorgeous. They are like lined with gold foil. It comes with a reading cloth and you can get a carrying case if you want. I think, honestly, uh, I mean, I'm a little biased, but I think it's their most beautiful deck that they've done so far. So I highly recommend picking up um, one of those if you're into tarot and stuff. All right, guys. Well, thank you for hanging out with me on New Year's Eve. It is now 830. So I still have a little time before I can uh, toast with my guinea pig friends. But I hope to see you guys more in 28, 2019. The other day I wrote 1998 on something. So I don't know. I don't know what year it is. Um, I hope you'll join me on Patreon. If you'd like to see me do more paint alongs, Patreon and pa paint alongs on Patreon. Um, you can support me there and I also have a sticker club where you can get stickers every month which has been really fun I've been making new stickers and a mini print club where you get a little um, mini print in the mail every month and yeah I have some other good stuff over there so check me out there please and you guys know the drill if you have a question for me post it in the comments below with hashtag that's the sign language for hashtag hashtag ask LJ and shoot me a New Year's question or anything you've always wondered about, about art, about games, about drag race, about pretty much anything. I'll answer it. Go weird with it if you want. I will try to do more paint alongs for you guys in the coming year. And until then, keep creating, keep staying positive, being kind to yourself. And remember, there's no mistakes, just happy accidents. See you guys later. Bye.